Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Welcome to a video of how to build your own computer. I know the camera is kind of like not exactly in the best spot. I can't get it far enough away to get the whole case in there. So there might be some camera movement going on. My voice might get kind of quiet sometimes because of where my microphone is located. But uh, I will make sure it is the best possible view for you guys. Um, also, there may be times where I'm kind of skipping the video and whatnot because there's some parts of my computer personally that frustrate me and I'm going to end up having to spend a little bit more time. So we either speed that time up or I will just say, here you go guys. Um, I just want to start out and say that my heat sink is actually a uh, water cooler, liquid cooler. So yours will probably differ a lot. You'll see what I'm talking about when you start building your computer and get all your parts. Down in the description is a, there will be in a couple of days, there will be a Google Docs spreadsheet of the prices for all my stuff, where you can buy them, and how much I paid for them. There will also be links to all the um, parts and the parts list, if I didn't say that already. Um, something that I didn't list at the very beginning there was the thermal paste. So there's the thermal paste right there, kind of. Let me adjust that. There we go. Um, so you will need some of that. But we will get to that in a little bit. So why don't we start off? Um, why don't we get our case taken apart here? Um, I have found that it is much easier to take off both side panels and the front panel before you really get going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the side panel off here. First thing you'll notice is that uh, you have a bunch of cables here. Uh, you will absolutely, more than likely, I won't say absolutely because some motherboards have this on them, but you will need your manual. Uh, it will tell you where some of these go, like um, <clears throat> these little guys here. Uh, your motherboard manual will tell you where to plug those in. That'll be one of those things that I end up skipping because um, it's going to differ for all motherboards. Um, unless you buy the exact same rig as me. Which is, if you're curious, this is the exact computer that I do all of my recording with. So let's go ahead and get this back panel off. I've already gone and unscrewed the two very back screws. So we're gonna get the back panel off. And we will get the front panel off, which usually involves quite a few little tabs you gotta push. And, uh, excuse me, sorry, getting cold. All that fun kind of stuff. So let's get these panels off, front panel off. There we go. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have a good way of checking how my location is, except for going to look at the camera. So I'm gonna come check the camera real quick. And we're looking pretty good so far. If you look, uh, one thing that will come with your motherboard is this guy. Um, that needs to go, ouch, I'm stepping on my panels. In the back here, you can see that there's this gap right here. You want to orient that, figure out where your motherboard's going. Usually the audio stuff is at the bottom, and you just kind of want to pop that in. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. Other times it goes really well. Let's see how it goes for me right now. And not too bad this time around. Um, maybe this was a pain in the butt when I first did it. There we go. And we are all in there. Next, you can kind of choose your own route um, <clears throat> for if you want to do the motherboard or power supply first. I'm going to go ahead and do the motherboard. If you look inside of your case, you can usually see that there are some screw holes and there are letters or numbers or stuff like that next to them. And they coincide to the type of motherboard you have and which mounts that it has. So I have all of mine in preset. You will determine that you're on your own because as I said, you will have a different motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my motherboard. Voila, motherboard. Very simple here. We're just gonna kinda come on over here. You wanna make sure you get it lined in right with your uh, back panel there. Get her nice and snug. And you will go ahead and take the hardware screws that came with your motherboard or your case. Sometimes they do end up being different, which was the case for me. I have much smaller screws than what I got with my motherboard. I had to go with the ones that came with the case. So I'll probably go ahead and fast forward through this for you guys and you guys um, can figure out yours. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, now that we have that done, um, you may have some extra screws that came with your case set up. Um, just to give it a quick once over, if you don't notice any screw holes missing, you're fine. They give you extra screws because some of them are absolutely ridiculously tiny. So now I know I said you could start with your motherboard or your power supply. I am going 
um, instead of doing power supply next, I'm going to go right to the processor. Uh, you can see down here, uh, yours is gonna, definitely going to look different. I currently don't have a mount in there for my heatsink because I have liquid cooling and it's a different kind of mount setup, something I'm going to fast forward through. Actually, I'll probably just skip entirely because it was a pain in the butt for me originally. Um, you will notice that you have this little latch here. You want to go ahead and put that in the unlocked position uh, so that you can set your processor on there nicely. I'm going to reach over. I'm going to grab my processor. Now you will notice that there is possibly if this focuses, which it isn't focusing very well. Um, there is an arrow on your processor and that coincides with an arrow that is on your socket. You want to line up those arrows, drop everything in. It should just drop right in. Make sure it's in all the way and put it back in the locked position. That's as easy as that. Next, uh, next, you will probably want to do your heatsink. Now, me, it's going to be hard for me to show this to you guys because of my heatsink. Typically, you just kind of drop it on. There's a couple latches or just one, and you kind of mess around and latch it and pop it right on. But first, before you do that, you're going to want to put on your thermal paste. Really, a little goes a long way. You don't need to use the entire thing. Put a dime-ish sized drop in the middle of your processor. And then uh, you will, it will basically spread itself out once you, excuse me, put your heatsink on. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip the video here while I get frustrated and put my heatsink on. And I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, you guys can see that I have my heatsink in here now, uh, my liquid cooler. You notice that I have this little radiator guy here. He is going to get mounted back here once I get to fans. Um... So for now, we've got the heat sink and processor in. You're going to want to power your heat sink, which you want to put on CPU fan 1. You will see the plugins for that on your keyboard. Get that in there. You'll get this extra guy here. That'll be for plugging in. Well, I have this extra one here. That'll go for plugging in the fan that connects to my radiator. So why don't we go ahead and uh, I'm going to skip through doing my, my plugins, my cords here, and then we will get to the power supply. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Alrighty guys, now that I got all of those plugged in, why don't we hop on to doing the power supply. Um, right now you can see that my cables are kind of messy, but that's something you can manage yourself at the end of your build. Um, and I will do as well, but I, if we saw that picture at the beginning, which you probably should did, uh, you notice I had a bunch of zip ties. All those zip ties are for cable management. I'm going to grab them. I can show you I have a whole bunch of zip ties. Uh, I got them at the same store. I bought, I get all my parts. Uh, it was actually really cheap for those. So we're going to grab our power supply. This big honking thing. So many wires hanging off. And we are simply going to put it right down here. Well, you may have a top mount of power supply. So you'll go ahead and put your power supply there. I'd pick up my case and show you, but you, I will have many difficulties doing so. There are four screws in the back and you simply want to screw them in and secure it nice and tight. Um, it helps to make sure you uh, basically you want to cross tighten. If you don't know what that means, it means that you always want to, you'll kind of want to get all of the screws in but not completely tight and then you will tighten them all. You want to go top, uh, bottom left, top right, bottom right, top left. That way you can make sure that everything is pulled together nicely. It's very similar to doing it like you would be if you're changing a car tire. So right now I'm doing the bottom left, top right, bottom right, and top left. So now all those are in. We're good to go. You're going to want to find all your power connectors, all nice and pretty. Uh, if you have a nice case like mine, you can run your power wires through the back. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your big one. Uh, usually 24 pins, it will depend on your motherboard, like a lot of things in this build, and you just simply plug it into the one that it's designed for. Pretty simple, right? Uh, next, uh, most motherboards have an extra 4 pin connector, which powers the processor. Simply grab that guy and plug it in. 
With me, this guy gets a little tricky in a little bit here when I'm putting in my video card. It likes to get in the way. All right, so we've got that done. That is essentially it right now. So next, why don't we go ahead and put on our RAM? I have four sticks of RAM, four gigabytes each. And this is really easy. Uh, I'll try and get my stuff out of the way here so you guys can see better. Um, it's pretty man uh, self-explanatory. You have your RAM slots. Basically, you line it up. Make sure they're seated right. Seated right. Come on, buddy. In that one. In that one. And you can just push down, and it'll lock in on its own. So whatever you do, make sure that it's seated right before you start pushing down. You don't want to break anything. And I almost broke something. Should be nice and snug. Now you guys may not have four sticks of RAM like I do, so you may be done already, and you're kind of like, Josh, let's go. Pick up the place here. There we go. RAM, done. So next, let's go ahead and do our video card and any other things we may have going down over in the PCI slots. Uh, so we'll start with our video card. I have an EG EVGA GTX 550 Ti. Now for me, this is a little tricky because I have these four the fork prong guys over here. I need to kind of maneuver it around so that it fits around there. And then it simply pops right in. You're going to want to grab mounting hardware. You use, you'll be able to tell what it is. It usually comes with the case. Uh, now you may have had to pop some things off the back here. I didn't have to because I basically I just took my computer apart to be able to do this build for you guys. I also have, once I get this on here, I also have a two port uh, USB 3.0 add on here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that guy in there. Working around cables. Bam. Tis in. Let me find my thing for it. There we go. And my screwdriver. And we're good there. Um, next, let's go ahead and do our hard drive. This is my hard drive. It is a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda XT. You guys want to take this guy? Most of the time now with newer cases, it gives you mounting hardware, mounting uh, brackets to make it a lot easier for you. Like I have these guys right here. Really simple for me. I just need to pop these on. Just like that. And then you need to find out where your drive bays go. Drop it right in. And mine's in. I don't know if yours are that easy or not. Mine are. It's wonderful. Why don't we go ahead and do our CD drive next while we're at it. Right now, you've noticed that we are just putting stuff in. We are not connecting any power, connecting any cables. We're just going ahead and dropping everything in. Now here's my DVD drive, CD DVD drive, right there. My case, it's very simple. I bring it right into the front, slide it in, line stuff up just right. My case has a lock and open thing. Right there, mine is locked in. You may have to have screws put in and all that kind of stuff. If you do, it's no big deal. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and mount my radiator and the fan that goes along with it. And then we will do the rest of our fans. So I got a couple fans here. I actually have five fans, which I was just kind of amazed. I just realized that myself. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my fans that isn't a pretty light up fan. Grab this guy. And for me, this gets a little tricky. Uh, I have really long screws to put in here. Once I find them all, there we go. And I need to get my radiator up like this. Right, is that how it, nope, I did it like this. Right, that's how I did this. Right, yes. And my fan has to go right on the back like that. And I need to line everything up all pretty and such and then get stuff to go into the right holes. So I'm gonna skip through this guys because it's a pain in the butt for me. And I will see you guys on the other side. Alrighty guys, now that we're back here, 
we are going to go ahead and start connecting some power to other other things. Um, typically, you'll have one other fan to put in, which I will let you go ahead and do yourself. There's a lot of places you can choose to put it. So I figure why not pick now to start connecting stuff. So first thing I'm going to connect here is my fan. Oop, that didn't quite go as planned. My fan. For me, that's that simple. Um, your system fan will typically have a spot that says SYS fan on the motherboard that you want to plug it into. If you, you want to make sure you plug it into uh, SYS fan 1. Otherwise, your computer may think that you don't have a fan in there. And it sometimes can refuse to boot. So next up, why don't we go ahead and flip her over here. And we're going to start plugging in things. Well, for me, I'm going to plug in my hard drive. So I'm going to flip over. Nothing is rolling around or flying. That's wonderful. I am putting my computer on my screwdriver. Don't do that. Um, now, my hard drive, really simple for me. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this guy. And I'm going to power him. Boom. Power. Done. Next. Um, <laughs> bless you. Excuse me. Okay. Bless me. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and... Get my hard drive ready to get plugged into the motherboard. I have my SATA cable here. And we are going to simply plug it into the back of the hard drive. Run the cable up through the front somehow, some way, however you want. And that will go to the motherboard. Next we want, I want to go ahead and connect my other thing. My CD drive. Sorry. And for that, I'm going to need a four, Molex, four pin Molex connector. I'm going to run it through the front here, or through the back to the front. I'm going to flip over. I don't know why I ran it through the bottom one, actually. I'm going to bring that back up. Uh, where'd it go? That one's not going to be long enough, actually. So I'm going to grab this one, run it through the back. I know you guys probably can't see it. I'm gonna make sure I get it all the way through. Lay the case back down carefully. Don't want to hurt any hurt any cords. You're not gonna kill anything if you have it sitting in there gently. Now you probably can't see this very well, but I am simply connecting to the required ports there. Um, next, now you can see it. it's getting a little messy cord-wise. This is gonna happen unless you do your cable management while you're building. I currently don't. I do it when I'm done. That's just how I personally do it. But I am going to go ahead and line up this guy and hook my hard drive in. Hard drive connected. Next, I'm going to do my CD drive. Which for me is actually one of these good old fashioned ribbon cables. I'm going to plug it in right next to my 24 pin connector. Really simple. And then I'm going to plug it into my CD drive. Like so. Maybe. There we go. And that, guys, is actually it. Um, except, one other thing, sorry, one more power thing we want to plug in. We want to grab, me personally, because of my video card, I want to grab one of these six-pin six, six pin connector guys. And run it, I'm going to actually have to pull that through. Back to this side. Should be grabbing one right now, yep. And depending on your video card, if you have one, you're gonna have, usually have a six pin connector to power the video card itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Video card is powered. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build your own computer. Uh, I know it was a little, little messy in there at times. Um, once you are completely done, next you're gonna wanna move on to cable management. Um, and then you wanna get your sides back on and your front panel. If you have any extra fans, get them mounted and you're ready to go. So guys, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I would be glad to answer them to the best of my knowledge. You guys have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, whatever be for you. This is Josh Fox signing out. I'll see you guys next time.